guess who's back in the house? I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. Today is Sunday and Netflix dropped the entire season of AJ and the Queen. And there are 10 episodes. The first episode is titled New York City. And all of the episodes are titled after cities like Dallas, Columbus, Pittsburgh. And that's really important to know when you watch the show. And so I'm not sure if... Hi, Cheryl. How are you? I hope that you're having a great day. Um, so that's important to know when watching episode one. It... Uh, the setting is New York City. We meet RuPaul's character, Robert, whose drag name is Ruby Red. And I actually love that name. It's we, we, we stick with ours, RuPaul, Robert, Ruby Red, or Red. And so I really love that. Um, and we start off the episode with Ruby Red performing for One Last Night in a club called The Box, which is in Manhattan. And um, for a number of years, Ruby has saved up $100,000 to open up her own club called The Queen, which, no, it's called Queen in Queens. So I thought that was kind of like clever. And so, I really recommend that before anyone watches uh, the season AJ and the Queen, that you have to really suspend belief. Oh, Cheryl has a question. Um, Netflix dropped a new show called AJ and the Queen, and it stars RuPaul. And so it just dropped on Friday. And so I watched uh, the first episode, actually met a woman yesterday who binge watched episode, it's 10 episodes, by the way. So she binge watched episodes one through 10. And I was like, I, I didn't, I had to sleep. So I only watched one episode. So Cheryl, you should check it out because it's, it's good so far. It's good so far. So um, Ruby Red is performing for her last night at the box and she's really excited. Uh, this is a new venture. She's in her fifties, I believe, um, kind of like similar to RuPaul. And this is what she has wanted since she first stepped on stage in drag as a performer. And so she's so ready to leave. And there are a number of cameos of Drag Race contestants in like the first 20 seconds. So there's uh, Valentina, um, Mayhem Miller, uh, who is kind of like a host. And so that was really cool to see Mayhem. I wasn't expecting to see Mayhem at all. Um, Eureka and... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm blank. Oh, um, Manila Luzon, Bianca, and who else? They're like, oh, Porkchop. You know, RuPaul loves Porkchop. So there are all of these girls um, in like the first 30 seconds. And so that's really cool that that happened. It kind of takes me out of the story when I see them. And that was uh, like a complaint that some people had. Um, and so it would be nice if these were kind of like separated that, um, you know, Drag Race exists out here and AJ and the Queen exists out here, but it's already been shot. So it's impossible. Um, but if you sus suspend belief, there are a few things that happen in AJ and the Queen that are a little unrealistic. So if you move out of that, um, you will really 
enjoy it. So suspend, suspend belief, move on to the story. So before I get into kind of like the review, one thing that I really appreciate about episode one is that Ruby Red, RuPaul, is deconstructed. And so she goes into the dressing room and her armor that we always see her in, whether she's in drag, uh, a beautiful wig, a beautiful gown, or out of drag, a beautiful tailored suit and hat, she, all of that is removed when she de-drags. And it's, it humanizes her. And so I really appreciated seeing Rue out of that armor, out of all types of drag, boy drag, female presenting drag, and just seeing the character. So that made me get more into Robert as Ruby Red. So I really appreciated that. And so we learn uh, through the narrator who is AJ. AJ is an 11 year old kid who lives in the same building in New York City as RuPaul, AJ's mother has become addicted to drugs and is prostituting herself. And so because of that, um, AJ is trying to get money to eat and she's doing all of these scams. AJ is a tomboy, by the way. Um, it, AJ is a little girl and so but she is male presenting uh, to uh, come off as more tough and um, so that people can um, that she could scam more people as a little boy than a little girl so Ruby Red is shading the owner of the box, who is um, one of the people who's on Hey Queen for uh, hot tea. And so I love like all of the cameos that we get. And so she's really shading the owner of the box so much that the owner says that you can never work here ever again. And that's also important to remember. And so RuPaul said, or Ruby Red says, I don't want to work here ever again anyway, because I'm opening up my own club. In the next scene, we see that Ruby Red is in love and has been dating a guy for seven months. And Ruby has really trusted this new partner um, with a lot of the details of the club and the finances that someone like myself, I really wouldn't trust a person in this capacity. Actually, I take that back. If they were really good looking, I probably would. And this person is actually very attractive. And so they are eating at their favorite restaurant, at their favorite booth, and they order the same thing that they order every single night that they go to this restaurant. And so we learned that uh, Ruby's boyfriend has a huge role in the opening of this club. The next day, they both are going to go to the club and um, they're going to give the security deposit to uh, the owner and they're going to start building out the club. And so the club is being completely built out. So it would actually take about, I don't know, maybe less than a year to complete. And so that's one of the things that was confusing about the plot. Like you're gonna quit your job to build out this club. So suspend belief with that. Suspend belief. And so um, the boyfriend has to leave because his sister is unable to get a babysitter. 
to watch the child. So she calls and says, like, hey, can you come watch the child? And so um, RuPaul says, yes, of course, this is family. And RuPaul goes home. And one of the things that I love about AJ and the Queen is that RuPaul's best friend, or I keep saying RuPaul, but Ruby Red's best friend of a number of years is blind. And we learned that she has become blind uh, due to, um, I think she went into like a diabetic shock of some sort. I actually thought that this actor was blind in real life. The actor is from Broadway and does a lot of voiceovers as well. And I think his name is George Michael or... Maybe it's Michael George Woolley. Completely believable is probably my favorite character on the show because of how realistic the character is. The character, her drag name is Miss Cocoa Butter. I love it. And um, was previously a drag queen and still sometimes gets in drag. Um, and is the star of the show. Like, I want more Cocoa Butter scenes. Brilliant. The, the skill of Broadway just radiates out of her. And I believe that she was blind. So, but she isn't in real life. And so, um... Coco Butter and RuPaul go to the club to give the security deposit to the owner. And um, Ruby has a credit card to give to the owner. The credit card is declined. We get into the meat of the story. The boyfriend has created this false narrative, a false identity, and has been leading a double life and basically has stolen all of Ruby's money. So the $100,000 that she had been saving up to build out this club, stolen. Um, and R Ruby Red also gave the boyfriend at the restaurant a joint credit card. The credit card has been depleted. So Ruby only has the money that she... Yes, Cheryl, this is all in episode one. It's a lot to take in, but it's only 52 minutes, so it goes by very quickly. And so um, Ruby Red is left with nothing except for the money that she made at the club the previous night. And she left the club with like a suitcase full of money because she's the most beloved queen from the box. So she goes home with Cocoa Butter and she realizes that AJ has broken into the home and stolen all of the money. She thinks very quickly and decides to go up the fire escape to see where um to see where um aj is so she finds aj gets the money and basically aj is like i'm sorry i took your money but i was hungry and i wanted to feed myself we find out that this is a lie and um Ruby is completely done with aj and is trying to call child protective services AJ escapes and we learn that Ruby, um, also one of the reasons why Ruby quit is because she's going on a road uh, trip for a tour in all of these different cities that she's stopping into. And one of the cool things that I love about Ruby is that Ruby tends to wear um, bright red wigs and red costumes. And so Cocoa Butter has actually stoned these beautiful kinky boot-esque uh, boots 
for for Ruby to go on the tour, and um, they just looked beautiful on Ruby. And Ruby has like all of these like red gowns and these like fire red garments. And so I really love that this is a complete separation in terms of like aesthetics from RuPaul because RuPaul is kind of like, you know, blonde hair. RuPaul does look amazing in red, but we haven't really seen RuPaul in a lot of red gowns or garments uh, previous seasons. So I really love this departure because it really keeps me in the story. Um, and so RuPaul, RuPaul, Ruby Red is going to drive like some type of like trailer um, across the country. And so she's driving off and Coco Butter says goodbye. And I think we get a glimpse at AJ's mother. So we, we don't get dialogue from her, but we get a glimpse of who she is. And so in the trailer, RuPaul is listening to like an early 90s Oprah episode where Oprah is talking about if you're a woman and you're not married by, I believe, 40, you're probably going to be single forever. And this is a study that came out in some type of scientific journal. And so Ruby is in tears, crying as she's driving over a bridge and she stops on the bridge um, as if she is thinking about jumping off of the bridge. And so um, the interesting thing is that um, she kind of like steps, um, she steps on some type of garment and she hears a scream and it's AJ. And AJ has snuck onto the bus or a trailer because um, she overheard Ruby stating that she's going to go to Texas at some point. And that's probably like episode six or seven. And she wants Ruby to drive her. And Ruby is like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, you're a thief. You're a scam artist. I don't want any of that. And so AJ tries to jump out of the car. And Ruby says, you know what? I'll give you a chance. We can go on the road together. Which leads us off into episode two. And uh, episode one ends with um, Ruby had no idea what she was getting into. And so I would give the episode a B. I'm excited. To, I'm going to watch episode two tomorrow. Um, there are a lot of things that kind of like need work um, as with kind of like all pilots that um, for RuPaul's performance, I think it could have been kind of um, shortened. It didn't need the length. And also, yeah, I give it a B, um, Cheryl. Only because like the opening sequence is too long. The dressing room scene with the other queens and the owner is too long. And then there isn't a the transition between the dressing room and the dinner scene with the boyfriend it's too quick and so we have this extended scene and then we're dropped into this new scene and so i think what could have been better is if we would have had the boyfriend in the opening sequence so that we already know that this relationship, this relationship has been established, scene one. And so it was just um, a long scene, a short scene, 
because we only get a short snippet of the boyfriend that's it um and so that's one of the reasons why i give it a b some of the acting is a little bit eh. um i think for season two they re they need to kind of like really sit down and really plan out the emotion that the character needs to feel in order to convey that to the audience and so if they it should be kind of like you know really guerrilla style or method but really just get all of the actors on board um and being able to emote what needs to be translated to the audience if, if that makes sense um so that's one thing that they need to work on i'm curious how the road trip is going to work out um ba basically ruby red is going to a different city and i believe the next city is pittsburgh where sharon needles and alaska thunderfuck they got their start from and so that should be really interesting and i believe in each city the queens that are going to be working with ruby red are queens from drag race and so some contestants from drag race have come out and stated that rupaul is very negative behind scenes um doesn't um doesn't really care for the girls and i always find that that's not really believable to me because like rue is constantly getting these girls work rupaul could have said you know what this is mine you guys can do your own projects rue invited a lot of girls like it's a lot of them like in some of these like teasers and trailers that i've seen like even um I've, silky nutmeg nutmeg ganache is in one episode um i believe trinity k bonet is in one episode so there are a lot of girls that are in this um season of aj and the queen and in a few weeks, I'm going to see Drag Race Live in Vegas. And so Rue is constantly, it's a residency for the Drag, drag Race Queens. And so Rue is constantly keeping these girls working. So I just, I don't buy that. Um, I think it's, and the queens who have come out and stated this, um, are not, well, most of them are not queens of color. One queen of color has come out and stated something similar to this, but it was for um, something that was related to represent representation of trans characters, which is kind of like a completely different story. So, um, yeah, so I don't believe it. So there are going to be a lot of queens at these different stops. And... We also learned that the very last stop, I believe, wait, no, I think the last stop is Dallas. Um, and in Dallas, Ruby Red is going to compete in a major drag queen pageant to win a large sum of money. And it would be really cool. I don't, it would be cool if the money is like $100,000, that way, um, she gets the money back to open up the club. That would be really cool. Or if she raises $100,000 um, through the tour. Oh, wait, Cheryl says two things. You got the Super Chat, right? Oh, what's Super Chat? I actually, what is Super Chat? Um, I'm not sure. What is that? Um, I'm still learning um, some of the different things in um youtube so just let me know what that is so i'm not sure um so yeah so 
Um, let's see, you have a dollar sign at the bottom of the screen. There's one at, oh, oh, thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. I didn't realize that. I have to look. That was really sweet of you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so I hope during the, during the tour, either she raises the $100,000 or she wins the $100,000 for the drag queen competition. Oh, no problem, my pleasure doll. Just wanted to make sure you get, oh, thank you, Cheryl. I really appreciate that. That's very sweet of you. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so it will be really cool if that could happen. And then at the very end, she opens up the club. So um, I'm going to an event like midday tomorrow. So I'm going to try and binge watch the rest of the season because it's only 10 episodes. Um, other Netflix shows that I love to watch, they're like longer, like 13, 15. Like Sensate, if you haven't watched Sensate, please watch it. It's an incredible show. Netflix unfortunately canceled it after like three seasons, which sucks. Um, so if you love RuPaul, support the show, because if you support the show, there will be a season two. Um, and this, this is a show that, um, there's not like a budgeting issue. Like Netflix is quick to drop shows that go over budget or are way too expensive to make on a, like on a season basis. So I'm sure the budget was small. RuPaul is actually one of the executive producers. And so um, that's, you know, major. Oh, wait, there will be a season two. Yeah, there will be a season two. Uh, but if if everyone supports and watches, there will be additional seasons. And this particular season took two years to create. Um, and Ru... I believe had was in the writing room. And so this was a passion project of Rue. And Rue stated kind of like out of her entire career, this was the most challenging project as well. So that's when they cut the shows up. Oh, I know, I, I really hate that. Um, and so Rue put into um, a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this project. And so as a writer myself, like I can really appreciate um, the interviews that she does talking about this project. And so really support. Um, I hope that, cause it really kind of like episode one, I really feel that Ruby Red is an alternate version of RuPaul who is a struggling New Yorker. And so I really want to be removed from RuPaul and really grounded into the story. And so I think it, even though I love that the, the drag race queens are in this, I would love to see other talent in season two, just because it, it removes me from, from the story. And so that's kind of like one of my critiques um, and just for the acting to become more solid. Oh, um, Rue always conjures up feelings of nostalgia from the early 90s. Yes, I, um, even though I'm really young, I love early 90s RuPaul music and videos. And they're actually even videos from RuPaul when she first moved to New York. And so I love watching those. Those are so brilliant just to see young Rue to Rue now. I love that. And I always love, I got to go to the RuPaul show like in June. And I always love stories from Michelle and just their relationship is beautiful. Um, 
So I I love just um, old Rue stories. And um, I don't know a lot about um, Matthew Anderson, Rue's makeup artist for 30 years, but I would love to hear more stories about Matthew during that early uh, Rue era. So yeah, so I think that's everything that you need to know about uh, season one, episode one of AJ and the Queen. And the episode is titled New York City. And so it's it's a B, which is it's good. Um, but I'm I'm going to binge watch the rest of the episodes. Um, so hopefully I'll finish by Monday and I'll put up additional um, reviews as well. And so I hope that you guys love this review um, and come back for the next reviews. So have a wonderful night. To everyone who watched me on live, thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Weird Broadcast. I think that's the full name. Thanks you for coming as well. And everyone else, thanks for watching. And um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful night. And until next time, Bezos.